Hi, I'm Dr. Seth Jenny, and we are going to discuss research study justification and implications. So we're talking about empirical research, peer-reviewed research journal articles. How do the authors justify that article and the research that was conducted, and um, how are the implications listed and what's the importance of these two items. Um, some of this information is taken from How to Critique Journal Articles in the Social Sciences by Harris 2014. So how do researchers justify the topic they choose to study? Typically this is done in the introduction where they're talking about past research what is currently known about that topic and they typically move from general discussion of the topic down to specific what is the purpose of the study and right to usually directly before the purpose statement you know the aim of this study was to or the purpose of the study was to um, you might see a term a gap in the literature exists and then they discuss what is not known about that particular topic. Um, whether that is um, a validation of what was studied or not, that is up to uh, the reader. Um, but I encourage you to, whenever you're reading a journal article, ask yourself, did, did they make the case? Is that the point of the introduction? Were you compelled to, to feel you know what, after reading this introduction, yeah, this study was needed uh, and it's important. So that was one way to try to evaluate whether the justification of the study was was clearly articulated by the authors. Next, do researchers maximize or minimize the impact their articles could have? So um, the one thing you want to think about, uh, and I'm sure that a lot of people um, don't want to read journal articles because some of them are written in such language that it is um, highly articulate and it's using the academic language of the field and so it intimidates people when we use this quote-unquote big words and so um, there's different types of works um, and there's different type of types of journals that um, are put out and so some of them are more technical than others and, and um, I'll show you an example of what you might call a practitioner journal where um, they are written uh, you know, a little bit higher level than a magazine, but um, the uh, the work is cited. Um, it's research evidence based, but it's written at a level where people in the field can actually use that information, um, boots on the ground immediately from what the information they get from that article. So the other thing that I want you to do is next time you read an academic journal article is to see is the significance of the results of that study and we're talking about primary research where there's participants and um, there was actually data collected and they have a result section and a discussion section and a conclusion um, do they have a clear-cut significance this research or this study was important because and sometimes that is embedded within the discussion um, when they're talking about those sub points sometimes it is in the conclusion embedded within the conclusion and other times it's a standalone subheading uh, even within the conclusion section and so I'd like to show you a few examples of that now so let's take a look um, Here's a study that I conducted. Um, it was a case study, and here's the conclusion section. And if we scroll down, sometimes what you'll see in um, uh, some articles is where they might, in the conclusion, have one or two sentences about the implications. And so if we scroll down here where we can see um, this implication section, why is it important? is one two three four five six paragraphs and there's even citations embedded within that let's close that tab all right now here is what you would call a practitioner article um, this is in a peer-reviewed journal journal of physical education recreation and dance also known as Joperd uh, article that I wrote this is written at a level 
in which um, practicing physical education uh, teachers, um, cross-country track coaches, uh, school administrators, um, people who are doing recreational programs, YMCA workers, can um, read this, comprehend it, and embed the information that they glean from it directly into their uh, job and their practice. And so you can see um, a lot of subheadings, uh, bulleted points, um, tables to help emphasize certain points. So here's specific for the different age groups, how often they should be running, um, what would be the distances recommended, very clear cut. And then here are actual lesson plans provided that people can use when they're doing different distance running activities with elementary age children. So you can see a um, lot easier to read than a technical journal article, um, bulleted points for people to easily get information from. Um, you know, this could be uh, another word for the you know, um, practical application, tips for practitioners types of thing. Here's this almost a mini case study relating to someone who's u embedding and using some of these strategies discussed in the article. So that's a um, practitioner article. Here is an example of a uh, peer-reviewed journal article in which the implications are embedded within the conclusion without a subheading. So here's the start of the conclusion and if we scroll down we're in the second paragraph of the conclusion and then you start see the start of the third paragraph the analysis of athlete identity and social capital for esports in the current study presents potential for several practical implications for athletics administrators and coaches as well as esports athletes and traditional student athletes. Um, FYI, esports are competitive video gaming. Um, so let's see how long this implications is. We have one paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs. It's a long one. So three paragraphs to finish off this article on uh, implications of this study. And this the, the complete article, as you see up here, um, well, actually, it's off the screen, but it's 21 pages. Here's another uh, peer-reviewed journal article in the Journal of Contemporary Athletics, um, a paper I uh, co-wrote here. Um, the appropriateness of and legal implications of employer-sponsored dodgeball and kickball events. And so if we scroll down through, we've got the abstract introduction, um, which is actually a fairly short introduction, but um, it's, it continues on on the appropriateness of dodgeball and kickball uh, in society. But then if an employer requires employees to participate in a dodgeball or kickball event for camaraderie purposes, what are the e legal implications of that? And so um, that's almost half of the paper are the legal implications of employer-sponsored dodgeball and kickball events. And we go through a few um, different court cases and, and happenings and the focus is on workers' compensation from injuries that may occur during some of those um, employer-sponsored kickball events and then risk management issues that uh, may arise for that. And so I want to um, finally go through, here's a paper um, that uh, I found that I struggled to find the implications that were clear cut in this paper. Uh, I'm not going to show you the, the uh, authors and the, and the title of it. Um, but when you look at the conclusion section and you read through it, it primarily just reiterates what the results were with very little practical implications of what was found and then it goes straight into the limitations in future research. So um, that would be one of the area where these authors could have um, strengthened this paper by making it very clear and um, potentially even having a subheading um, within the conclusion. What are those practical implications? Why is this study important and why are the results of this study important um, for the greater good? 
So in conclusion, uh, the, the next time you're reading through a journal article, um, take a look to see how, what's the impact of it and is it achieving maximal impact? Is it written in accessible language? Um, is it just written for other academics or is this a practitioner type of piece where people can easily um, glean off information from it and use it? And does it explicitly address and discuss what are the implications for practice and for people within that uh, career field.